going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back once again, y'all, to the Tuffy Talk live show. We are here and we are ready to discuss all things NC State. As you can see, among all of us, there's a little bit of a deep breath here, you know, as uh, you know, we move into week three here. Um, but, you know, we're excited to talk about the Notre Dame game and uh, talk about with you, Wolfpack Nation, and our amazing followers here. Uh, if you have if you've been with us for you know the drills always, but if you haven't uh, sent any comments, questions, thoughts, concerns that you have in the chat, and we will get to them here today um, as we're going to be discussing mostly the Notre Dame game pretty much this this whole show. But again, we'll sprinkle some other things in there, too. But uh, that's obviously a big highlight for sure. But um, I do want to ask because uh, I'm obviously a little bit confused as on Saturday, did we play Notre Dame? No, did we play the number 10 team in the country, Notre Dame, or did we play Boston College or like Bethune Cookman or something like that? Because from from a lot of this, from a lot of the posts, I mean, you think we had like we had like a terrible loss, lost to some nobody on Saturday. I'm not really sure. Michael Gray, can you help me clarify on that? Okay. Uh I I think they had gold helmets. Yeah. <laughs> so. It was it was very wet. I don't remember. It looked it looked like a really mm-hmm. good team, but I could be wrong. Maybe yeah, they right. switched teams after the rain delay or the lightning yeah, delay. I know. I know. No, again, not necessarily trying to dig, but just again, I like that. That's my biggest thing is like literally for the first time ever, literally on Saturday night, I just said, All right, I'm putting away social media. Like it's just, mm. it's just, it was just too much. Like again, I completely understand concern. And again, there's always going to be concern. And I appreciate concern. Why? Because if, if, you, if you're not concerned, then you, then you don't care. You know, I mean, like being concerned means that you care. Um, which I appreciate. Uh, but again, it's, uh, and we'll break into it a lot of it here today, but you know, definitely the first thing I got to say out of it is, I mean, heading into the fourth quarter, we had an opportunity down seven with a, with a fumble recovery within 25 yard line. We had an opportunity in the fourth quarter to tie the game against Notre Dame. And so like, you know, everybody's saying we got blown out. No, I just think that just, we had an amazing opportunity that we just couldn't, get it done at that t- at that time and then just kind of the you know all the air came out of the balloon now i mean you know is that acceptable no but i mean like it's just there's there's just so much you know that goes into it and again we'll unpack as much of it as we can here today um and i know we already got a couple comments here which i want to go ahead and get to uh you know we'll get to some of them here but uh you know it's always good to see appreciate doc uh, tuning in michelle as always one of our amazing followers uh Connor, appreciate you tuning in, my man. Uh, but let's 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 kind of before we get into the deep stuff here, let's have let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's talk about some our uh, our thoughts on the new uh, new changes uh, within Carter Finley Stadium. Uh, so, Wait, like you know, this, there's something new. There was something yeah, new right? on Saturday. I, I don't know. It broke. I, I mean, it broke. I, I, I mean, I mean, we for, we forgot that there was a lot to celebrate, even in a loss, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I still had a good time. I mean, these yeah. people, these people acted and it just kind of you were talking through your kind of your monologue there. And I was just thinking about, you know, everything. We had football on Saturday at Carter Finley for the first time in what, nine months, I guess, probably my math's not good. Um, yeah, we lost, but they're like I had a great time on Saturday. <laughs> like, um, obviously, if you follow <laughs> social media, you saw me doing Rain Angels and. Just I enjoyed everything there was about it, and maybe watching a game, a ball game from home, is a little bit different. But I don't know. There's there's a lot to be happy for, and I mean, and I guess we'll talk about it. But there's way much more than life than a football game on Saturday, and um, you know. But anyway, well, I I because I'm with you, mate, uh, Layton. I I I put it away. Um, uh, I didn't get. I really, I like basically had a forty-eight hour rule, and I was just didn't want to get on social media because I, I knew everybody would be coming out of the woodworks, and you know the the same takes we have every year after about game two or three because you know it it, it it always seems that there's a loss you know early in the season, and it's fire Dorn, and I don't know why we have these coordinators. And year ten, this is the same thing, and blah 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 blah. It just gets it gets old and tiresome. And look, if you don't like it, don't watch it. I mean, don't don't ruin it for the rest of us. So well, well, the one thing which I'll add, and Michael, I want to hear your thoughts. But I mean, like you know, I know there's kind of a question of, you know, well, you know, we need to bring in a guy who's going to, you know, uh, you know, help the program and you know take the program to new heights. 
when I'm saying here, I mean, I haven't been a state fan a long time. Again, I'm only 29 years old, but I've been a state fan long enough to remember times where we lost to Boston College, like by a nail biter. And I was like, oh, man, like, man, we, we were really close to being Boston College. All right, let's move on next week. Oh, Virginia. Like, like, but, but then we lose to Notre Dame, the number 10 team in the country. And after a torrential downpour for a two hours delay, and after being having an opportunity to tie the game at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and there was fans screaming at the top of their lungs behind me, going, "What are we doing?" And I'm like, "We're we're we're this upset over barely losing again, barely." I'm saying to the fourth quarter to the number ten team in the country, Notre Dame. Like to me, that's all the signal I need to say we have obviously raised our expectations, which I love, I appreciate that. So, but that I think that's 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 a big piece of evidence right there. There saying. There was definitely times where losing to Boston College was like, ah, man, you know, we lost Boston College, but oh well. And now we're losing the number 10 team in the country. And we're like, what are we doing? You know? So, Michael, give me your thoughts here, man. Yeah. It, it, it was just, just such a weird game with the whole, just with the yeah. whole delay to start it. Like, they were, they had to start it on time because it was like almost sunny out by kickoff. And then even though right. the storms were coming in, um, but I don't know. I it, it, it's hard. You I got to think about the game separately from the reaction to the game, right? Um, but uh, offensively, you had a lot of lot of missed opportunities. I mean, the mm-hmm. plays were there. A lot of drops by the receivers. I mean, I don't think that's that's I, that was the biggest thing. There were there were plenty of especially in, in key situations, there were a couple third downs and, you know, yeah, a couple third downs that the receivers just dropped the ball and it would have been a first down and you keep, keep playing. Well, that's the thing is that like, like did Brennan have some overthrows? Absolutely. Did he make some bad plays? Absolutely. But, but the wide receivers Every made drops. Does. I mean, the offensive line played really well pass rush, but didn't really do much run blocking. Like, you know, and I didn't call its best game. Dorn had made some questionable decisions, especially at the end of the first half. You know, defense obviously gave up more explosive plays than they ever did combined last year yeah. in one game alone. Like, this game is not on Brian Armstrong, ladies and gentlemen. It's not. Simple as yeah. that, folks. I mean, no, it was defense, a team loss. I mean, and, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. And the defense has just been, I mean, through two games, it's just been like when they're when they're not giving up a big play – they're they're stopping the offense, and that was true against UConn and even against Notre Dame. I mean, yeah, the big plays hurt you the most, but it's like you're not allowing the sustained drives, um, which is good. But then some of that is you're giving up big plays on on the opposite side, and they've been they've been big. <laughs> and, and you yeah. know, it's crazy too. The big plays haven't been big plays. You know what I mean? Like they're 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 50 the yards after yards. catch plays. Correct. Right. Yes. People getting yes. out of position. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not it's not schematic. It's just performance. I guess is the yeah. Is which the, is the if there, it, that's probably more frustrating, but at the same time, that's something that's fixable. It's not like you know we're just getting beat deep because we don't have the speed to keep up with people. Right. Right. And, yeah. And because other. I mean, and because other thing too, which I want to add uh, real quick is like you know, the, like I was I was frustrated too, and I know a lot of fans are frustrated that Notre Dame ran the same play four different times where it was basically like a play action, yeah, you know, tight play, end. and then and, and then and they tossed it to the tight end, and myself and everybody was like, why do we keep falling for that? But thinking back on it, it's like, well, because we respected the run so much because their offensive line is at, is 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 the best office line in the country, in my opinion. They're the best yeah. office line in the country because they are talented, they're experienced, and they've played together a lot. So, I mean, they they have everything you look at, and they have a really great running back back there. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I really kind of understand why they really focus so much on the run game because their office line was just that good. And, again, they just got burned at the, you know, the beginning of the second quarter, whatever, on that, you know, 90-yard run to, you know, start off after the delay. So, they're yeah, saying what, to themselves, I really don't want that to happen to me again. But go ahead. That that made it, what, 17-7 at that point? 10-3. 10-3. That was 10-3. 10-0. 10-0. Yes. Okay. 10-0. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was a 10-point deficit somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And that, man, I, I mean, that – I was I was worried after that, but 
I mean, credit to the team. Huge gut punch. It, it made it a made it a one score game in the fourth quarter. Kept it in it for that long. Yeah. And then obviously, I mean, at the end, you, you know. Brennan was just forcing stuff to make it happen. So I'm yeah, not just I mean, it, it was definitely an uphill battle all day, right? And it and it yeah. felt like we finally had just gotten to the almost to the. Oh, your mic went out. Your mic went out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, and, and you know, because one thing too is that you know the thing which I will give Doran props on is that you know Rooks was struggling early. Uh, uh, J- Julian Gray was struggling early, uh, you know, like all these guys are struggling early. And so instead of saying, well, we're going to keep forcing these guys until they figure it out, they said, well, let's go to the young guns. Let's Vereen. go to Kevin Concepcion and, and uh, Javante Vereen, who, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, Javante Vereen, y'all, like. He made some great plays. I see a little I mean, Kyle Pitts in him, man. Like that dude is, man, he can jump. He is shifty. Like, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, so, especially that one at the goal line where he kind of just stopped. Oh. Did the 360? Oh, so beautiful. Planted his foot in the ground and then went. Uh, I think he went left. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was. That I mean, was I wish he had was, scored was, on that one, but yeah, uh, yeah, he deserved that one. Yeah, but that? he's. Ahead. I mean, he's just not going to be a tight end. Like, I, it, he's a wide receiver. <laughs> but again, I mean, like, like, well, again, I see him like a kind of a Kyle Pitts, where yeah. you know they could probably bulk him up and make him, you know, a blocker if need be. But yeah, you know, or but but like, you got options. Be a main, yeah, you got options exactly. Um, go ahead, Greg. I know you've been trying to chime in. Yeah, no, I was. Yeah, my 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 the browser went out on me. But uh, I I was just saying when we were climbing the mountain, when we we got down there after that turnover, uh, our play calling probably wasn't as good as it could have been. We had a penalty in there, um, and then it just, and then of course he missed the field goal. And, and like you said, that was the that was the ball game at that point. That uh, not to say that they yeah. not not to say that they gave up, but you could just you could feel the life of that stadium just come. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. and mm. and I think you you know I, I get why people are frustrated because you know they they brought in a new quarterback, they brought in a new offensive coordinator, and people just think that if you do it, it's just yeah. going to come together in one full swoop. And and look, we're not making excuses, but you can understand why things are the way they are at this moment. Um, I'm definitely curious on some things and we can talk about it now or we can, you know, work our way into it. I don't know what your plan is, but um, you know, the running back situation I think is still kind of weird for us. Um, We didn't, we didn't get a lot of, a lot of yards from our running back. Um, You know, who is the running back? Uh, I think that's a, that's a thing. Um, I think the wide receiver room, uh, we kind of talked about it in the discord yesterday that I think that's just going to work itself. It's starting to work itself out through natural selection. You're seeing the guys that can and can't make plays. Um, that 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 rotation is starting to take shape. Um, and then you know you have VMI, which is one offense million is going to look good against them. It's going to be a get right game on the <laughs> offense. And then you got to you're going into UVA, which Brennan will be pumped for that game. And that's mm-hmm. a team that just lost to James Madison over the weekend. So yeah. I think the next two games, it's going to be, all right, let's get the offense right, and then you go get ready for the real part of the ACC schedule. I, at what, least that's what I'm looking at from my vantage point. I don't know. What are you guys thinking there? Yeah, no, 100% the same thing is is the fact that I just have to remind everybody once again, we were – Notre Dame was favored by seven to seven and a half points depending on where you were looking. Mm-hmm. So, I mean – there was nobody expecting us to win. 96% of, of the public bets yeah. were on Notre Dame minus seven. Okay. Nobody expected us to win. Uh, and then for us, like for us here at Tuffy Talk, like besides, I think besides Michael and Greg, uh, you know, who were just going full out, you know, you know, craziness here. Uh, I mean, like making, I, you know, as predicted, Notre Dame, and he, heck, he, even I know for Inside Pack Sports, you know, looking at their stuff, which I mean, I'm sure it's not you know, quiet content because it's, you know, it's over now, but most of them predicted, uh, you know, Notre Dame to win, you know, just to, again, it's just an interesting moment. So, so I'm sitting here saying, listen, there's a lot of good. That I did see in the fact that you started to see the offense click in moments. You started to see things, you know, go. And also too, you're really hoping out of this, that guys like Rook guys, like uh, Julian Gray guys, like, uh, you know, like, you know, all the Terrell Timmons, like all those guys take that game, as like the, all right, like that can't happen no more. Like we can't rely on Kevin Concepcion and Javante Vereen, our two, our two freshmen, 
you know, playmakers to get us out of games. That's why, like, I can't really be upset at Kevin Kevception for that terrible drop he had uh, that it, it resulted in interception. Why? Because a lot of the reason why we got to that point was because of him. Like, he made some huge plays in key moments, you know? So, I mean, I mean, am I, like, you know, again, is it, is it am I okay with the mistake? No, but I mean, I can't really be too upset at him, you know. I mean, it's a freshman mistake, you know. So yeah, yeah. What I mean, what <laughs> you're asking a freshman to be the next coming of a Heisman Trophy candidate if they're, they're not going to make mistakes, right? Um, yeah. Now, right. is it a tough spot that it happened in? Sure. Like obviously, you 100%. want that mistake because that was a first down, and that was a beautiful Correct. throw. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. No. No. You're 100. Mm-hmm. percent That was exactly what I was going to say. Um, but you're hoping that these mistakes are in garbage time, if you will, and so that you can live with it. And um, look, w- when you when you can't rely on these other guys and you have to rely on on freshmen, that's the chance you take with it. I mean, that is the, that's the good with the bad. They're going to make two good plays and one oh crap play, and mm-hmm. that's what happened yeah. in that moment. Yeah, I mean, but. I think they still, you know, have that have the most upside out there because, like you said, you're gonna you play your best players, right? I mean, if they're your best guys, and you know, at at that time, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, and maybe, maybe like you're saying, um, uh, gosh dang it, Leighton, that uh, these other guys will now rise, right? That they're seeing that these young guys are out there, you know, busting their humps, maybe. Maybe that becomes contagious with the rest of the the different groups. You know, if you're seeing underclassmen outperforming you, maybe maybe you need to look in the mirror and go, maybe they're not the problem. Maybe it's on me, and now I need to take personal personal ownership of what I can do to help this team. Which yeah. I do got to I do got to ask a simple question though. What's the deal with Rosner? Why don't they play him more, or why don't they get the ball to him more? Because like I saw. I saw him get that first first down, and I'm like, yeah. man, that guy yeah. is I, he's a player. He, go ahead, go ahead. Um, go I ahead. I think by the time we get to Louisville, I think he's going to be pretty much starting. And that's I mean, and that's kind of what I was getting at, right? Like, I think you have so many wide receivers, and you don't know who was going to step up, and you're trying to figure that out. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe games aren't the time to figure that out. I don't I don't know. Um, you know, maybe they're just trying to, you know, go with the hot hands in the different position groups and figure, yeah. you know, someone will catch catch fire and then they can ride that. Yeah. I, I I think you're gonna see about four or five guys in in the wide receiver group, and the rest of yeah. them will just be mm-hmm. sprinkled in for a breather. Um, yeah. because it's you you're starting to see through two games who can go out there and make plays and who can't. Yeah. yeah, and and Rosner specifically on Rosner. I mean, he's just you know he just joined the team at the beginning of fall camp, so it's been, it's right, been yeah. a month. So yeah. Uh, yeah, like Greg said, I think your your wide receiver room gets once you get into all ACC play. I think it gets narrowed down to you know five guys. Yeah. Now, uh, and I, I know that we you know we kind of wanted to talk about the fun stuff, and we'll definitely get to some questions here. I guess we're just kind of touching on. A couple of the main big, you know, points of emphasis after. <laughs> yeah, the game. you started this question uh, with what did we I know, think of the scoreboard? But it just kind of went back that direction. I'm like, you know what? We'll just go with it. Um, Let's go back to the scoreboard, though. I, I, I think we do need to take a break and talk about something positive. <laughs> one more, Greg. Ooh, one more, it, man. Sir. Come on. One you more. got it. One more. Uh, just because this is, I think, is the biggest one. All yeah. right. And I don't think it should take much time for us because we've talked about this 800 times. All right. For all the. Put MJ in. Put MJ in, y'all. Put MJ in. Like, he will be the guy. I'm going to say this, first and foremost, because I really wanted to screen this out at all the people around me yelling this uh, late late in the game. We know nothing for certain about MJ Morris. We know nothing for certain. Like, like we know he is a great guy. He we know he is a off. great talent. Like, like, we know that he loves NC State, you know, which is awesome. But at the end of the day, do we really know for sure that he is that much better than Brandon Armstrong right now? I mean, like to me, I'm sitting here saying all of us as fans, we think it for sure. But then they have to remind everybody once again that when we saw MJ Morris last year, we saw him going against a defense that was in the bottom half of the ACC. They, they weren't great defenses. And we never saw him start on the road or really play significant playing time on the road. Okay. So I'm sitting here saying – do you really want to switch 
from Brandon Armstrong, who's again is you know fifth year guy has played you know twenty probably by now thirty different games. Switch from a lefty to now a righty with a guy that you know hasn't been probably getting most of the you know first first team reps. Like like no like and that's because once again he still has a red shirt he can go get. And so and and to me I'm sitting here saying unless the coaching staff is for certain that MJ Morris is significantly better than Brian Armstrong, which I just do not see happening. It does not make sense to burn his red shirt because there's going to be times where maybe, yeah, maybe their talent level is equal, but maybe that experience, that poise that Brian Armstrong has gained over his years will come through for us. in a couple of times that maybe MJ just can't because he's just still so young. He's still so raw, ladies and gentlemen, like he's still learning this offense. So, uh so that that's that's kind of really my thing uh michael greg at at, at on that go ahead yeah, yeah i would just say this and this is my mj thought you will not see mj morris until and barring an injury something crazy you will not see mj morris in a ball game until louisville at the earliest and i say that because it does you no good putting mj morris against vmi no. You won't learn anything other than he can go out and run plays. He he, he won't he won't move the needle against VMI. We and know he, he has prob- potential, right? Yeah. And he probably doesn't go move the needle against UVA. Let's be honest. All right, right. No disrespect, but it just you know that would be like him playing against Virginia Tech last year. Yes, it's an ACC ball game. It would be on the road. I just don't see where it's going to change anyone's opinion and perspective if he goes and balls out against two teams that quote unquote. He should ball out against it. Amen. It just doesn't do anything. When you go play Louisville at home on that Friday night, if Brendan Armstrong is struggling, maybe that's when you go make the move. Cause you're, again, you're at home. You have that home environment to where it won't He's be been hostile. There, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So just my two cents on that. Um, do I think that he will get a look at, I do. Um, uh, I, I, and the other thing that's game five at that point against Louisville coincidentally it's about the same time he came in last year against Virginia Tech was about that same time where he had time to learn that offense and now he's got yeah. some confidence in it again just just my my perspective on that and I hope we don't see him like I hope Brennan yeah. in the offense figures this out right. and we truly get to redshirt him and and potentially have him for you know uh three three years and and go from there but you know and, and the last thing I'll add, and we'll get to the, some, and I'll let Michael wrap this uh, topic up, and uh, we'll get to some of these comments here finally, uh, is that everybody's saying, well, you got to start preparing for the future. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, no, there is nothing no, certain don't. about the future in today's day and age. As much as it kills me to say it, you cannot say, well, let's go ahead and get this guy some, some experience for next time. Like, no. At, at the end of the day, every single guy on this roster, there is no contract. There is no guarantee that that guy is going to be on this roster next year. So if MJ goes out and kills it this year, who say Alabama won't come and offer him a stupid amount of money to go transfer to to wherever? Like you know, it, it's it's unfortunately a hundred percent situation. Yes, yeah, guy, right here. There is no point to MJ red uh, redshirting. MJ will not be a starting quarterback for us in twenty twenty six. He will either live up to expect, expectations and get drafted or not. Simple as that. I love it. Michael, wrap this wrap this topic yeah. up, man. Yeah, I mean. This is where you get coaches get penalized for recruiting too well when you know you have multiple really good options. Um, but I, yeah, I, I mean, I just can't. There, it was completely predictable that this was going to come out after this game against probably a top ten team, for sure, a top ten defense in the country. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just. Like it just doesn't make sense to to make a switch now. Do we or have this conversation? Even have brought him in by seven points. Is it because we got blown up by twenty one, and then you know, yeah, um, Brandon had three interceptions, even though one of them wasn't his fault, and one well, was and, just and they, and they, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and, uh, and again, ladies and gentlemen, we will not go against as good of an uh, we will not go as good against as good of an all around team as we just faced. Like you know, every single guy I'm looking at the rest of this the rest of the season. There are questions. That Notre Dame team, pretty much from top to bottom, has really good players at almost every single position. Just like Michael was saying, we have, they have a really great defense, and that they, offense is no joke. Go ahead. I think they only had one sophomore, and he was a freshman All American last year. Everybody else is yeah. juniors or seniors. So yeah. 
All right, so let's go ahead and finally get some of these comments. We appreciate y'all y'all getting these comments in, so we need to get to them here. So uh, Michelle coming in here saying they're now number eight for a reason. I agree there. Um, all I read Saturday on the Tuffy Talk Discord was to stay sane. Absolutely, just stay sane. We'll, we back try. We we'll, try. Get, we'll get there. Stay sane. Um, yeah, and then Aiden Ledford talking about the rain delay really took our fans and home field advantage out of it. I, again, that's that's a great point that we've 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 said is that what if like because again after after we sacked Sam Harbin on the first drive went three and out it was blaringly loud. Imagine if that had continued. So yeah. again, that's why another thing too is the rain delay really killed it uh, and really changed the game, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not saying we um, win that game, but I would like to have seen it planned out where where it we would have made a, a different crowd. Yeah, there would have made no doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah, um, yeah. Shout out to Michelle, her daughter attending her first game as a student. Awesome to see. Uh, nice. You got some fan, got some fans in the Michael. Uh, got some preach Michael in in the chat. Love it. Um. Yep, uh, Drew saying need our older wide receivers to be older wide receivers. Yeah, we love Casey and Juice. That's 100% it. percent agree. Lead the way. Amen. Uh, yep, and then Cameron Nance saying, please let us use Rosner more, but don't show too much because it's BMI. Again, they won't pull any kind of hats out of the bag or cats out of the bag against BMI. It's going to be basically everything that yeah. we've seen so far, but just hopefully a lot cleaner. Um, yeah. And then uh, Rusty asking the question, what is the biggest weakness at this time? What is the biggest strength at this time? Uh, so here, what we'll do just to make this a whole lot quicker, Greg, give me, the, in your opinion, the biggest weakness, and then Michael, give me what you think is the biggest strength. Uh, biggest weakness, I would say our running game. Okay, that's fair. Michael? Just because oh, – oh, real quick, I'll give one, one more. Yeah, please. Uh, you can control the t- clock, the tempo, the pace of the game if you can run. You can then mix in your play action and some of these plays that where, you know, Brendan looks like he's not in sync or whatever, you can get you can get wide open guys, right? So I think I think that run game is, is, is really what's hurting us right now or lack thereof. That's fair. Michael, what you got for our biggest strength? Uh, I, I mean, I'd say the defensive line right now. I mean, it they're they've been really good. They, um, uh, Hibbler had a Hibbler. sack. Mm-hmm. Uh, Noah Potter recovered a fumble. Brandon, Cleveland I mean, and those good. are Brandon Cleveland. I mean, he didn't play much, but he, I think he had like one sack and a couple tackles for loss, and like only he a might be our plays. next to Lee McNeil, man. I'm telling yeah. you, He's yeah, yeah. So. I, I think that's it and it held up for the most part. Um, you know, the big runs, big runs, well, the one big run that Notre Dame broke off, I think that was more of a linebacker secondary issue than a defensive line. But well, it, um it, yeah, and it kind of has because we only run a three man front, right? So it, yeah. it, the job is is the clog and the linebackers right. to clean. Right. So right. Yeah, I would yeah. agree. Um, Josh pointing out how Michael Allen only had one carry in their game, and yeah, that's definitely a big question of what is going on there. And same thing with Trent Penix. Like again, that was a guy in the preseason that like everybody was saying that guy's going to be an All ACC caliber player, but he's been non-existent in two games. Yeah, um, we know he was coming back for some injury, but still, it, it you know, is there something more there? Is that injury still persistent? Um, because you're right, Coach Dorn and Coach and I both sung his praise in this offense. Yeah. And tight ends in general, like we really haven't gotten the tight end position involved at all. The Seabros and the mm-hmm. um, Toodles, Toodle. and the, yep, and the Penix of the world. Like, what? Mm-hmm. What? I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe we just need to go back to some basics on this on some of this stuff. I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it, Doc, it is frustrating. Yeah, and then Doc Gibbs, you know, kind of around the same topic, saying, "Where are T.J. McClendon, Shadrack, mm-hmm. Mike Days?" Equivalent talent on today's team off there, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, the first thing I would say is I just don't think that Doran really goes after those guys. I just don't think it's a real focal point to have, you know, that big lead guy. Now, I mean, I think that one thing which I'll say is I think that's changing now with uh, like Jonathan, Jonathan Paler, man, uh, you know, running back slash wide receiver, you know, out. But I don't know. Like I just. To me, I, I'm just not seeing a big focus recruiting wise on that big time, you know, big time oh. stud running back, you know, kind of more of a dual threat speed we, guy. And that, yeah, that's not, I don't think that's unique. That's the running back is the least important offensive position in today's football. And mm-hmm. just, just, just look, just look how they're getting paid in the NFL, yeah. right? That, that bears yeah. that out. Yeah. 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 
Yep. And then Drew saying here, I can live with KC making mistakes, not so much in the other guys. Absolutely. Again, you got to like big players make, make big plays and big games. Like, you know, you need your big players to make big plays and big games. Simple as that. Um, Andy, why did Michael Allen get only one touch? Don't know. We'll find out. Um, and then uh, uh, Andy saying, I don't uh, think anyone hated that drop more than KC. Absolutely. Like, I, I don't know if you guys saw him on the sidelines. I, I had, I was looking right at him from where I was sitting. But you could tell, like after after it happened, he was doing like this thing, like maybe it was like a calming thing. But he was like like breathing, like bringing like his hands like from his like waist to his neck and back down. Like you could tell he was doing some kind of a breathing technique. I'm sure to calm himself down. So I definitely felt for him there, as I know he he felt it bad. Um, and uh, Cameron saying, I'm I'm thinking they'll start catching more passes. The good thing is they're getting open. Last thing is I don't really think they're getting a lot of separation though. You know. Uh, yeah, like like I, I've seen a lot of plays where where Brennan has gone through his progression, and you know, like especially against Notre Dame, you know, which I got to give a huge shout out to our offensive line. Again, the pass protection was phenomenal, uh, but you know, I have just I haven't seen uh, you know at least in my first two games that we've seen I've seen in person, I haven't seen him look one time or two times at a wide receiver, you know, and then and then throw it. It's usually been three, four, scramble. Okay, I'll throw it to this guy. That's been a lot of it recently. So yeah, he definitely I mean, didn't have wrong? the happy feet that he had against UConn. I mean, I think he he definitely right. he definitely stayed in the pocket longer and, and and tried to work through and and then pulled when he had to. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for positives, I guess that's one. I mean, they don't always show up as as like hey, but you know, I think it's just learning to trust your trust your eyes, trust your players that they're going to be there where they're supposed to be to make plays. Um, <sighs> I, and I don't know. I think we try to be optimistic. I, I, I think, you know, I don't think the, I don't think it's I don't think the season's over. I mean, and, and we keep saying it. That was that was the number, you know, now the eight team in the country. Look, the ACC is still open for grabs. You know, we we still have, you know, super open. You know, we still have things to, to play for. Mm. Um, but it's this begin where you need to start seeing some changing, you know, some changes. And I think the other thing people are frustrated with is you're seeing the same things from game one to game two, and then they haven't been quote unquote cleaned up or, you know, fixed. Um, so, so maybe that leads to some of the people's frustrations that they're, you know, that we haven't flipped the switch on and now we got it all working like, like a well oiled yep. machine. Yep. Um, Doc asking the question is in, is MJ quote unquote injury prone since he's our backup. If he gets hurt, then where are we? I think that one of the things is that that I went into it is I think that Doran and then felt very confident in Brennan's toughness. And, and I mean, and I mean, again, that he's played so much football and I mean, like he, he's a guy that he, even yeah. last year, he proved that he could play through injuries, you know? So you know, well, I, he I just really that, hasn't gotten injured that much. Like, he, right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I just think it's, you know, kind of a thing where he just decided to focus more on other areas than finding a third backup spot. You know, it's just, I think it's kind of one of those things too, where it's like, it's like on a roulette wheel. Like if it hits one number once, like, you know, what's the odds of you betting on that number again? Cause the odds of that number are hitting twice back to back are very, very small. So it's like, if we played our third string run quarterback last year, what what's really the odds of us yeah. being our third string yeah. quarterback again this year? Like, not saying that that should mean anything, but I mean, just in my head, that's why I'm thinking about being like, there's no way that can happen to us again, right? Like, that rarely happens to college football, but it's going to happen to us two years in a row. But right. no one else it would totally happen because that'd be some NC State beep. So, yep. uh, <laughs> um, Rusty asked the question Do you want to criticism for poor clock management? Is this warranted? I mean, there was some questionable stuff, though, right? With the yeah. calling timeout just to decide to punt, and then kind of eating it at the, towards the end, and you get that big play to midfield, and the then half, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's. Yeah. I feel like I every mean, coach gets criticized for that, though. Yeah. It's, well, because a lot of it, a lot of it's hindsight twenty twenty. A easy. lot of it's yep. yeah. Because yeah. if you don't make that catch, then it's not. You know right. what I mean? Then, There's then not, it's like yeah. Then nobody talks yeah. about it exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but again. I think it goes back to coach Doran's philosophy as a whole. He's a very conservative coach and, you know, we know that after 10 years and, and so it shouldn't surprise you because conservative conservatism in that regard definitely goes. Oh, to- uh, you're stag on Mike went out again. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Well, and, and again, so it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, I, I, 
there's probably every single coach in the history of coaching has has gotten criticized for poor clock management at one point or another. It's it's a tough thing for sure. There's there's no, yeah. you know, there's no correct answer. It's just what what your gut tells you, what the analytics tells you, and that's what you go with. I know with Dorn, he's big on analytics. So, um, and D. Rip uh, bring in the comment saying, "Going to have to bring in the best quarterback possible next year in the floor as well." As well. But yeah. see, that's the thing. That's another reason why I'm saying yeah. you should play Brennan because you're kind of keeping MJ off the map. Nobody's looking at MJ right now because he's not playing. So I mean, like, what's the chances of you know a program who can afford to pay him enough to take him away from us? saying, I'm going to go give this guy all this money who was on the bench all season. So, I mean, I, that's kind of a, a small victory side of it is, you know, it's a way to think about it is, I mean, you know, if Brennan plays the whole season, it's a 99.9999999% likelihood you're going to see MJ as starting quarterback next season. So, right. two cents there. Um, and then, Greg, I want to get your thoughts, but I mean, I do got to give a huge shout out. The fans were absolutely phenomenal for sure, as I was – very surprised by the turnout after the delay. I mean, I really thought it was going to be a third full. I thought it was going to be mm-hmm. very obvious that there was a lot of people that left. But, I mean, it was a good three-quarters full, two-thirds, three-quarters full, man. Like, it was like there was there were spots, but it wasn't like, man, look at that empty section. Like, it really wasn't like that after the, after the delay. Yeah, the biggest empty spot was the student section, obviously, in the corner. Um, but yeah. other than that, uh, I thought, I thought people showed up really well. If you hung, if you hung and you came back to the game, it was pretty much clear. <laughs> like as soon as we got back in the stadium within the first 15 minutes, I don't think, you know, the sun was out the whole time. Um, didn't, it didn't stop me from not, not drying out because I was still wet when I left that game, but I, I was, I was impressed. I really was. Uh, I, I thought, I thought to your same point that we would have maybe, 25 to 35,000. It almost looked look like the Yukon game, but I, I would still say there was about 40, 45,000 in, in, in there. And they were, they were still loud. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. There was moments where the, the crowd got up and, you know, especially when that fumble happened in the, late in the third quarter, I thought, I thought the place was, was, was rocking, but yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. still frustrating though. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take away the sting. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, now I do want to bring up, uh, um, uh, so Scott Ford mentioned in the comment, don't kid yourself. People are looking at MJ. He has no secret OCs and QB coaches know that the tools that kid has and his potential. But see, here's my thing is that, is that for, you know, we don't know his numbers of what he's making here NIL wise. And, but I'm sitting here saying it will take a significant increase in terms of money opportunity for him to leave when he's on, like, like he's been here to get ready to be the the you know the the starting quarterback like and so for him to give basically waste the time that he you know was here because now he's gonna have to go somewhere else learn a new offense learn the new learn the coaches learn the players learn the environment so he's gonna go through all that it better be a significant pay bump like that that's kind of my two cents and so is anybody really gonna give him that significant pay bump when you haven't seen him start this season? Like that, that's my two cents on it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that kid's got great potential, but you still don't know. You right. still don't know. Yeah. It is, a, he, it is, it, it is like you're looking into, you're looking into, into, you know, a glass ball. That's really what you're doing with MJ. Like, you see it there. You, it has diamonds all around it, but <laughs> like, you know, like it's, it's pretty for sure, but you still don't know. So, Michael, give me any, anything to add to that. No, no, you nailed it. All right, sweetness. Uh, and then uh, he was our QB three. Is it Lex? I would say so. Technically, but, I mean, yeah. God forbid we never find out. Uh, <laughs> um, and, if any uh, team gets their third quarterback, they're not. They're not right. Winning, right? It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, unless you're Dave Dorn, like last year, like just yeah. saying. So, um, uh, and then yeah, it says a lot about our fan base. So many returned, mm-hmm. absolutely. So. All right, y'all. So, um, wanted to kind of really quickly touch on one thing uh, uh, as we kind of move back to that question we originally were talking about. I want to get your thoughts on the band moving to the other side. I did not like it whatsoever. I understand the thought process behind it because there were so many students that would, you know, you know, sneak into the marching band area, and it was, you know, getting in the way of, uh, you know, the people who pay tickets for the area, things like that. But it just wasn't as loud. And also I didn't like it either because they still had the microphone set up and there's still a speaker 
that's set up to play over the student section on the cart on the on the Murphy Center side. And so literally you'd hear the band play and then you hear like an echo from that speaker over there. And so mm-hmm. it just didn't sound right. It wasn't to me, it wasn't as loud. Like I didn't like it to be honest with you. What were your thoughts? Um yeah, it even with the band so now the band is on my end of the field and it just I felt and maybe I don't know. I'm I'm weird. It felt loud. The band was louder on the other end of the field than where they're now that they're on my end of the field. It didn't seem as loud. And uh, I, I guess the the one thing that you folks can do if they didn't like anything, uh, NC State does send out a fan survey. You know, fill those things out. Apparently, um, they they've made changes due to people's input. So I don't not saying that it probably will ever change again, but you never know. If you yeah. if you feel strongly, submit a submit a uh, an opinion on the survey and and see what happens. But yeah, it was the the dynamics of it definitely was weird. Um, yeah, well, because like you know, my mom's in here saying the student section was lost without the band, and and I do agree that this, I feel like the student section kind of relies on the band to like look at them and you know like figure out like, what's going on things like that like the cues yeah you that's know, true like, I didn't uh, think about that yeah you know like the you know don't 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 don't. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know just you know you see the band doing it and, and then the students like oh yeah cool yeah but don't don't you know so you know mm-hmm. I, I and it's because it's like now you don't have the i can't remember his last name but chris the the guy that was like you know you know guy's doctorate literally used to be the you know leader of the student section at every single and stay athletic events uh like you don't have like a you know a leader of of the student section anymore like telling the student section what to do so so yeah, I do agree. They're it's kind of lost now. So I say either move the band back, or let's find a way to make a new leader the leader of the student section that can, you know, yell out what to do and things like that. So Kevin Smith coming in hot with the name. Exactly, I love it. Um, yeah, and then D Rip asking how how about the scoreboard and get hit with lightning? That was par for the course for so I I'm hearing that damaged. it didn't get hit by lightning. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, that was the reports from some WRL reporters I saw that they clarified it did not get hit, but yeah, no. there was, an, it was, there was very at least close, like a, a surge, a surge or something. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So yeah, no, it's it's fine. I'm sure just with the with the, when the electricity, uh, you know, turned off and back on. I'm sure that you know again because there's so much power running through. I think it just shuts off. Like it's not like it's not like lights where it just you know, goes off and comes right back on. Like, you know, yeah, it probably just shuts off automatically. There wasn't even try to get back a, up. Safety. There was a dude yeah. up top though, during the game working on it. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. You, probably I saw, uh, I saw someone took a picture of it and you can see like a little ant up there, uh, <laughs> working on it. So I, I do know that, you know, there was like a big old block of it not working. And then that block just kept getting smaller through the rest of the game. And by oh, good. about, by about the, I guess the halfway through the fourth quarter, it was fully back. So I think, I think we'll be good, but, um, Let's talk yeah. about the pregame. Can we talk about the pregame video show on that? Because I thought that was pretty cool. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I, I obviously I've... I didn't see it, but yeah. <laughs> have you, have you seen awesome. the video? Have you seen the video of it? We no, did they put it out? Oh, okay. I, come on, man. Tough to talk, man. Well, yeah, yeah. And I told um, you, I did the same thing. I was off social media after that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I and I kind of mentioned in our Discord, and I think I don't know how we get this to happen, but. They do the law, the jungle, you know, speech. slowly, slowly. And I think, man, it, it builds beautifully. If we could get the crowd to go for the strength of the pack is the wolf and the, and the, uh, strength strength of the wolf, is the, wolf is the pack. If yeah. you do that to get the crowd going and then you get the, the intro to the crowd come or the, the uh, team coming in, mm-hmm. you might have something there. I, I mean, I don't know how you get everyone to, to, to do the chant together, but whoo, I was like, I see goosebumps here. Well, and see, this is my other thing, too. I think our first night game of the season will be Louisville. And, man, that first yeah. night game with that, dude, it's going to be absolutely sick. It's going to be so sick. All, 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 you know, like having the, you know, the light show combined with the scoreboard, combined with the new sound system, like, psh, dude, it's going to be unreal. And yeah. anybody knows, too, how uh, when Mr. and Mrs. Wolf came out on the, the the hat how now it has smoke blowing out or you know smoke blowing out the back of it now like like even that's changed too i'm like man there's been a lot of changes from last season this season like yeah. the 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 marching band pregame show changed a ton mm-hmm. like it used to be the yeah. same marching band pregame show for like decades and now it's completely different like it's 
it's a completely different experience than Carter Finley, ladies and gentlemen. Completely different in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, and the whole thing too. Saturday was weird because they didn't open the gates on time, and then it just caused yeah. a mass backup for people trying to get in. Uh, yeah, it, it was definitely some first game kinks, right? And I think they'll work those out. And uh, yeah. by the way, did you notice there's new metal detectors coming in the stadium now? Like, like did you did they do bag searches for you guys on on your side of the stadium? Like there was like no bag searches, and so I think mm-hmm. those new metal detectors can tell what's like in the bags. Um, and then, and then my mom bringing up, what's up with that wolf house? Did you guys see that? Or did you see that, Greg? How they have like, literally like a doghouse looking thing beside uh, the entrance for the visitor team. If, if, if And let, uh, let me know in the comments, y'all, if y'all saw this too. But there's literally what looks like a big doghouse. That's, Is that that's, Tuffy's? Um, that Tuffy? Tuffy? Yeah, it's like the wolf house. Tuffy 3? Yeah, it's, it, it's called the wolf house. And so I, I don't I know if Tuffy 3 is housed in there. But if anybody has any, you know. Like in, inside of that, I'm very curious. I, yeah, I pictures, saw that, I was like, I did, and I should have totally. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I yeah, couldn't and, see it from where where I was at. Um, so yeah, yeah no, I'll look for it. I'll look for it uh, on on Saturday. Yeah, um, and then what else? There's one other thing. Um, oh, real quick, like yeah. I what I really liked about the game, the in game production, uh, was you could see the players, like they were like focusing in on the players, like in between plays, like coming into the mm-hmm. in and out of the huddle. Um, so I, I thought nice. there, I thought there was some really nice in-game live action between the plays. Um, mm-hmm. definitely, I definitely liked the out of town scores. You could see more of those, uh, the stats. Mm-hmm. I, I liked those, um, mm-hmm. because, you know, cell service still stinks in Carter Finley <laughs> after all these years, even though they've had 40 upgrades, uh, yeah, I can yep. never get stats or scores. So that was, that was a, a nice, uh, to have. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, uh, and the other thing, too, which I wanted to uh, I forgot about, too, uh, which uh, Michelle brought up was uh, the Holt brothers doing the, mm-hmm. the um, you know, the chant, the Wolfpack like, chant. Yeah, the Wolfpack chant. I loved it. It was cool. Like, you know, like, you know, with with me, you know, my wife being a South Carolina grad, you know, they do that for the you know Gamecocks or whatever. And uh, so, I, you know, my wife laughed when I told her that we were doing that. But I'm honestly very curious, like each week who they're going to do. Like, I mean, I would. Yeah, be who do you get? Like. Like if you see like a Garrett Bradbury or you know Bradley Chubb coming back and do it one week, uh, you see Philip Rivers doing it. Like you know, do you see you know? Is it just Washington? football players? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would assume. I mean, oh, no, it, it is be... only ever going to be. No, so I'm saying. Right. Uh, my question is: Is it, it going to just be football? Oh, it's only going to be. We... Yeah. Or do we do we see other North Carolina State legends? Oh, I would love to see Ellie Avon do yeah. it. Yeah, sick. whatever. Yeah. Right. Kind of like the uh, the si- siren it. horn for for the Canes. Right. Maybe something like similar to that, or are they just get people that are associated with with the team or or nc state in general um yeah. maybe chancellor woodson does it one time you know that would be kind of cool yeah. to see you know a, a different side of his personality i i don't know maybe scotty mccreary like there's all kinds of cool people that scotty you could McCreary have be cool yeah. yeah absolutely i like it all righty y'all we are 50 minutes in we have gotten to zero tweets of the week which is okay i mean we, i think we've pretty much talked we needed uh, this notre dame game. i think we've talked yeah. to notre game off so i think we'll we'll kind of skip most of the notre dame ones because we i think we've talked about that that points to death uh so let's jump on over some uh you know what before yeah, yeah. nope you know what before we wrap this up we have a toughies mailbag so we're going to talk to that question since uh this person was was good enough to submit it so let's jump on on over to uh toughies mailbag y'all. All righty. Uh, let me pull it right up. As, uh, hey, while you're doing that, real quick. Okay, you no, got? you're good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. If you got your, go ahead. Go for it, please. So I would just, I'd like this comment because whoever this Joe Naismith guy is that, like, I don't know who's Joe, Joe Namath? Naismith. Is that Joe Namath? Oh, Joe, Joe Namath. Namath. I can't yeah, hear you tonight. My goodness. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Joe Namath. He's like 80 years old. He has no idea what he's talking about. We didn't schedule that yeah. game. The ACC does so. Yeah, we have yeah. no choice. We, and we sold yeah. out every other game before that game we played. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 He's, and that, that was one of my tweets of the week. But once again, like like we sold out literally every single ticket of all of our home games before the first home game even began. Yeah. So I, said, I was thinking Naismith because I was at the Naismith Hall of Fame two weeks ago. So I just read it as Naismith, yeah. not Naismith. Hello. All right. Mm. Anyway, pull up your mail back. And just, Josh brought. Josh Brown too. Big T would be really cool to do it once. Yeah, too. yeah. Be there you go. Be yeah, well, he he. No, he's saying Turquavion was there. I saw that tweet. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, team, yeah. Like hanging out. He's playing in the yeah. NBA and he's coming you back. See, he was still wearing his jersey. You see, yeah. he was still wearing his jersey at the game. That was pretty cool. Wow. 
Yeah. All right. So Tuffy's mailbag. Here we go. So what corrections? Oh my God, did it again. Uh, what corrections do you think our coaches can make on both sides of the ball going? <laughs> I took me off. My fault. Uh, so cut the so, PowerPoint off and then cut you off. Yeah, right. Um, so mm-hmm. help save with time. So since uh Greg, I put you on the spot first, and Michael second, I'm <laughs> Michael put you on the spot first. So offense. What is the one change you think that Dorn needs to make going forward? And obviously, Greg, you got to have time to think. You got to narrow down the receivers. I think you're still playing, which I think that's what, it was always going to happen. I mean, I think eight different receivers got snaps yesterday, um, and I think you got to narrow that down to to five, maybe six, um, mm-hmm. of just your reliable guys that um, give you the best upside. Yeah, or just consistency, whatever it takes, you yeah, know. Yeah, consistency, yeah. All right, Greg, how do we limit these big plays, my man? What's the biggest change defense needs to make? Uh, Fire Tony I, Gibson? No. <laughs> no, no that's, <laughs> that's that's the first direction. You know, you know what, just go just go back to West Virginia. Um, no, right. I, I, uh, I'm I paraphrasing here, but I guess it was reported and my friend texted to me that basically, and, and Michael, if you watch the game, you might, you might have the quote better, but basically – if your heart's not in it, if you're not willing to put in the effort, just go home now. Something to that effect. To, you know, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't remember the exact. Um, yeah, but, but there was Dav- Devin Van. They said was was calling people out on yeah, the sidelines, and then Peyton Wilson definitely was in the his post game press I conference. It. Was I love it? Oh, oh my God, Greg, it did it again. Dang, damn it. Um. Greg, jump back right back in here, but I do got to give a shout out that uh, right. uh, Parker uh, pointing out. Yeah, again, Rosner, I think needs to get, yeah, needs to become one of those and five. Get him involved more. He so he will. Yeah, Greg, you back? Go ahead. Yep, not yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then uh, D. Rube saying, "Yeah, Peyton Wilson did say that." And again, because I love like that. That's 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 the thing for me that makes me so, you know still feeling very very good about about this team moving forward is the fact there is so much leadership like i have all the confidence in the world and peyton wilson davin van these guys are going to get 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 the get it right like i have i have all the confidence in the world in that and then offensively you know i'm saying you're saying hey you have two games to figure it out and then you're going to be starting with the meat of the of the acc schedule so you know i'm sitting here saying there's no doubt in my mind that our offense within uh, two weeks from now is going to look a lot different than it does right now. It's going to look a lot different. It's going to change. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So, no. Yep. And, um, and then go ahead, Michael. Well, since, since Greg got cut off there on defense, yeah. yeah, it's just for me, it's just fixing the mental mistakes, which that comes with experience. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Sean Brown, Boykin, uh, Betty, Jalen Scott, all in their first years of starting, they're—I mean, they're—they're they're athletically and you know physically they fit. They fit on the field, but you know it just takes that experience to get the mental reps. Um, Absolutely, and fix some of those issues. Absolutely, um, Greg. Uh, I know we missed you, man. But uh, anything you'd add on to it besides the mental errors on the defensive side? Yeah, I just think that's what it is. Uh, I don't think it's schemat. I don't think it's schema or schematically an issue. It's just you know the want to. You you need to have that desire to go out and make plays and 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 trust trust your coaches and that they're going to put you in the best position to to make plays. And if you're not going to mm-hmm. listen to your coaches and get coached up, then there's no need for you to be out on the field. Yep, absolutely, completely agree there. All righty, y'all. So I think we have hit this Notre Dame topic to death. So we're going to move on to a couple other things that my mom brings up our next one. Uh, oh, we can't even do that though, because we got to move. We got to transition Tuffy's tweets of the week. Y'all. So here we go. All right. Now, yes. Unfortunate news here today is we have yeah. learned that starting free safety, Jakeen Harris will miss the remainder of the season with a torn peck. Uh, what she suffered uh, early in uh, mm-hmm. uh, week one versus UConn. Uh, so definitely feel for Jakeen for sure. And, uh, you know, between him and uh, our offensive lineman, um, uh, Jeremillo, mm-hmm. uh, Dawson Jeremillo, 
Um, definitely not what you want to see. And, and that's why Wolfpack, you know, Wolfpack Nation, ladies and gentlemen, I, I always say it is the toughest thing in the world. It is impossible to predict how football season is going to go because there is no sport in all of sports that, that you see as many injuries and turnover as you do in football. Like, you know, it's, it is guaranteed. If you don't have somebody that's not knocked out, if you, if you have, if you don't have anybody that's knocked out for the season at, at all during a, a, a football season, then you have some magic dust on you. Like mm-hmm. it's just uh, the unfortunate, you know, just the aggressiveness of the game, you know, it's just, it's just waiting for somebody to get rolled up on and tear an ACL, unfortunately, or in this case where he just got a interesting fall you know he just fell weird and and obviously it, it tore his pack you know so it's unfortunate for sure so our thoughts and prayers go to Jaki and hope that he has a speedy recovery and we know that he will be a huge uh leader for us on the sidelines go ahead greg i think we're trying yeah to you could him. just tell something i could see him walking around with a sling on, on saturday so it, it obviously looked like it was going to be you know not a week-to-week injury and then obviously the news comes out today that you know it's a season ending uh injury so definitely prayers up and um, now he just becomes a, a vocal leader on the sidelines and an extra coach to get his guys uh, coached up. Which uh, I do got to give a shout out, though. I think I've noticed with Doran that he definitely has a trend of playing something off as, yeah, no, he's fine. He's playing yeah. week to week. But then he's out for the season, a.k.a. Devin Leary, how he was like, yeah, he could play against Syracuse last year. We'll see. And then he doesn't play. I, yeah, I, I think that's just gamesmanship so the other team can't prepare, you know. Right. Just, you know, and but that's the thing about the college. You're not required to disclose injuries like you are the NFL. So it's right. a and, and some of that they they may just not know right initially. Right. Testing, you don't and, know. Yeah, you yeah. gotta wait for stuff to come back, and you know. Yeah, absolutely. Second opinions um, and mm-hmm. like, yeah, hundred percent. Um, so now I want to before I bring up this next tweet of the week, which uh, kind of rolls right into this uh, today. <laughs> excuse me. Um. We released part one of our NC State Ice Pack preview. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out yet, make sure to go and do it. Uh, as I can tell you once and for all, the Wolf Pack Nation, that if you have not become a fan of the NC State Ice Pack, this is the season to do it. I'm telling you right now from everything, from, from the first game I saw against ECU on Friday night, uh, <laughs> this team is different, folks. Beat it by like two they, touchdowns. They, they, yeah, they won by two touchdowns against ECU. 17-3 to three over ECU. But man, they are fast. They are talented, man. Like I love this team. I am super excited to see what this team can do. Um, so make sure you go. And then us too, because if you haven't heard already, which is you know, if, if you're not, that means you're just not following us on, on YouTube or Twitter. So make sure to go do that or TikTok or Instagram. But we have two tickets and a parking pass once again up up to gra- up for grabs uh, for VMI. So the first thing which I gotta say is uh, uh, it, to enter, all you have to do is we have to hit a 50 like threshold for part one of the instant ice pack preview. So whether you haven't, are you, whether you are going to enter or even if you're not going to interview, please do us a big favor and go to that, go check out that video, hit that like button so we can hit that 50 like thresholds. That way we can give away these tickets and the parking pass. Um, But again, to enter, all you have to do is just be a subscriber to the YouTube channel, which is free to do. You can do it right now. And then uh, just comment down below in, in the ice pack preview part one, and we will pick one lucky winner on uh, Thursday night when the two tickets to parking pass. Go ahead, Greg. The, no, I would say the winder, the winder, the winner of mm-hmm. last week stopped by, stopped by my tailgate and thanked oh, us. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, oh, nice. Yeah. He had a, he had a good time and he and his buddy, uh, came out and, uh, yeah, it was really nice meeting them. So congrats on that. And, uh, yeah. my wife was the person who cho- chose the, uh, the winner. So you, you guys be creative in your comments because, uh, she got a good laugh out of it. So whoever, Whoever uh, picks, you know, we like the we like the fun and good comments, not just "Hey, pick me." Uh, I can sure. pretty much keep, promise you that you're not going to get the tickets if you just want to say go. "pick me." So uh, we want to know that you're, you know, you're following and, and having a good time along with us. Yeah, and uh, I do got to br- talk about this, this comment right here. Don't don't think there's a true state fan alum out there who would accept mediocrity. The biggest thing I just have to remind people is we're not mediocre. Like we're not average. Yeah, in, people in, in don't football. understand what we're not average. means. <laughs> yeah. like we're, we're not BC. Not... Well, dude, I, <laughs> I don't know. If BC's even me- mediocrity. No, um, that's, the that's the definition mediocre. mediocre. The definition of only moderate quality, not very good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, I think that's what I'm saying. I think BC <laughs> is mediocre. Like, 
Like, Again, if, if, you, if you really are taking a loss to a number 10 team in the country against Notre Dame and saying that we're mediocre because we lost by 21, but at one point early in the fourth quarter, we went down by seven with opportunity to tie, like, come on. No, we, we, are, we are in the top third, top – and again, I say this once again. There's not 10 teams – there's not 10 programs in the whole country that have a better culture than we do. I am saying that I will die on that stone. I'm telling you that right now. That we have an amazing culture. Players, coaches love this program. And the fact that once again, we sold out of all of our season tickets before the first game even started. NC State fans love this team right now. So that's what I'm saying. Is like, like how much more can you really ask? You know, like, like, yes, yes, we we want to win AC championship. No doubt about it. But that's the not, only not thing. winning a championship also doesn't mean you're mediocre. No. And especially because, again, I mean, there's only been three teams in all of the ACC in the last 13 years that have won AC championship. Of the 12, what, 14 teams that are involved in ACC, only three of them have won AC championship over the last 13 years. Yeah. So, and, and only like, what, two of them have won it multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, because only, only Pitt won it one time. But other than that, it's been uh, uh, Forest Day or Clemson. So. Yep. Yep. Both Thank on you, the Andy. Atlantic. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right, bring it back in. So now back to our breathe, uh, toughest tweet of the week here. Got got to give a huge shout out here. As as man, I was shocked. I was watching it on TV. As uh, I was just sitting there, I just couldn't bring myself to go into the game and staying up to eleven o'clock and then having to get up at five a.m. to go to a seven a.m. tailgate. I just couldn't do it. But um, uh, yeah, right. I know. So, but uh, but man, like seeing how long the line was to get into Invisalign Arena and seeing. I mean, how absolutely packed it was, man. Like, it was awesome. Like, I- I'm telling you this, ladies and gentlemen, like, like it's – there's a lot of people I've gotten on the bandwagon, and don't be too late to jump on. Like, like, like get on it right now because you are missing out if you don't. How many people does that hold, just out of curiosity? I, I have no idea. Hold or – like, like I guarantee you – Like, how many you, people can sit in there? Like, you know, how many people – How much is legally capacity? allowed? I guarantee you is less than how many were actually there. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. No, I mean, I mean, look at that bottom I, picture. I, don't I know. know you can't see that well, but there is no space to walk. No, right there. no, there's none. none. Yeah, I was just curious how many it holds. I think it's like I know it's several thousand for sure. It's, it's a few thousand. Yeah, yeah but yeah. maybe like maybe yeah. two or three. The, yeah, uh, I was going to say twenty five hundred, maybe. That's what I was kind of thinking somewhere around that number. Yeah, yeah. So, but and and because the funny thing too is that on one side, I, I, you can't see it, so I can't really say it, but. On the far side of the rink, usually that part of the glass is like closed off because they, I, yeah. I guess, they don't want fans close to where the ice packs players you know, are walk yeah. from the locker room is or whatever. But now they have fans standing over there. Like I think that that was honestly just a we need more room to put these people, you know. And so uh, again, so I just I I I, I gotta say this again that if you haven't checked out the ice pack preview, we talked about the Frozen Finley game, the impact of it. Uh, you know, we talked about what's going to be different about this team. And again, just just go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Parker saying I'm, I was at a game last year and they had a fire code violation. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you. Well, thankfully, there's water you. there. So, yeah, th- they should sure. be OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome, though. So, yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's always been a program that's, you know, continually continuously just gotten bigger and bigger. You know, and I think um, that, you know, they've won and competed for championships. I think last year, that whole frozen Finley, I think it just took the program to a whole nother level and that you are, uh, you yeah. de- they're definitely seeing the benefits and reaping the the success from, from those types of events, especially when they play at uh, PNC and so on. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Now let's move on to our next tweet of the week here. Got to give a shout out to our boy, Jacoby Myers, man, for absolutely balling out yesterday. And I want to say huge congratulations for myself. For selecting him sixth overall in my fantasy football draft, man, selecting Jacoby Myers has absolutely paid off. Just beautiful, man. You did not select him sixth overall. No, shoot. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. You know I that. Call, I got to call I shenanigans. Know. Yeah, no. But I, just, I don't know. Man, that's a, that's a, that week one. That's, that's a, a good – That's man. worth. Yeah, yeah, that's worth yeah. the sixth overall pick. Yeah, right? he's on track for 34 touchdowns. We get it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Yeah, no, but again, I mean, nine catches for 81 yards and two touchdowns, man. I know that he uh, uh, had was dealing with the injury late in the concussion, game. Concussion, yeah. Um, yeah, it's concussion, concussion but, but man, I just still can't help but try and wrap my head around how this guy came in as like a three-star quarterback, 
he was like he was talking he was talked to about getting a uh an offer from florida but he ended up not getting it so he came to stay like man like it's crazy to think about how how far this guy's come and how now he's one of the top 40 wide receivers in the nfl give or take probably, i mean probably like, just think off the top of my head 40. i just don't understand why the the patriots of all people gave up on him and got juju juju sister that yeah, sister smith over him it just baffles me but whatever no, they probably didn't want to pay him because he signed they, pay, they paid the same they paid they 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 signed for the same contract oh, they did? yeah was like within like a million or two of each other it wasn't wasn't drastic but yeah love it yeah good for him Amen. i think he just got paid like 35 million dollars so yeah he got paid good he got paid good no doubt about it all right so let's move on here uh to our next tweet of the week here um got to give a shout out to a to a golfer of all people um yeah i saw that today greg say say her name go ahead yeah L- lauren olivia i can't even see it but, but it's Le- leon is her last name leon olivia Ol- 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 i think is how you say it lauren Oliveris leon i like it i yeah. like that i go lauren yeah. Oliveris leon yep leon who, pro- leon probably it's leon it's, yeah it's yep. spanish probably who yeah. shot a 60 which is a NCAA record for the lowest individual round and shot a minus uh, a minus 11, had yeah. 10 birdies out of 18 holes. She had two that's bogeys crazy. too, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's how, like, that's how yeah. much on fire she was. NCAA record. So that's yeah. like in what? At that course? or No, like at the lowest individual score of a round in women's golf history is what it is. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So yeah, it, it's uh so got to give a huge shout out to you for Lauren, man. I mean, you know, just can't say enough, ladies and gentlemen, that you know, please go support these other sports, man. Like you know, like like volleyball just won the tournament, won their tournament in Ohio yeah, over the weekend. Yeah, they're eight and one. Yep, uh, men's soccer started off really, really strong. Um, so you know, Wolfpack Nation, ladies and gentlemen, just go, go please support these. And also, too, I think women, uh, men's soccer, they broke an attendance record actually uh, last week uh as well so i yeah. mean again y'all go support these teams they Women's deserve cross it. country gets started on friday so yeah any national champions there and that's another thing too i felt bad that that they didn't honor caitlin tui before the rain because i really like that girl deserves a standing ovation and unfortunately by that point that was like right after the delay like it was like maybe like it was really the first stoppage that they honored caitlin tui and it was definitely not the ovation that she deserved. Yeah, I hadn't but, gotten back yeah. in the stadium by that point. So I was just Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so uh, Infinite Hate pointing out here, only home cross-country mm-hmm. meet of the season this Friday, yeah. S- September 15th at Wake Med Soccer Park. Women's race starts at 620. So, hey, if you want to go see Kayla Tui and the and the GOAT for Insta Athletics, uh, go support her and the cross-country team. I might go check Friday that out on a Friday. I'll be back in town. So maybe I'll go do that. Exactly. I love it. All right, now let me cue up the next tweet of the week here. Uh, oh, well, it's perfect that Michael would go away because guess what, Greg? It's probably something that we, you and I will mainly talk about anyway. So perfect timing there, Michael. Uh, He's like, I'm out. So uh, flow rankings came out, and uh, Interstate Wrestling uh, has, I'm, I'm counting here, has six wrestlers in the top ten, yep. which is phenomenal for which sure. Is, I guess preseason All-American essentially, right? Yeah, well, if, I mean, you, like, technically for this double tournament, top you have to get top eight to be top eight, okay, all American. Um, so that means you have, yeah, you have six of them that yep. are, yeah, top 10. No, one, two, three, four, five. yeah, six, okay, yeah, six, yeah. So there's one, there's one wrestler that's not ranked in the top 25 somewhere, which I can't think seven who it is. Seven, um, ten. but anyway, uh, but I mean. I wasn't really shocked at Camacho number eight, which I think is interesting how they they are assuming that come out or you know that they're putting Camacho when we're still trying to figure out what's going on with uh 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 man, what's the oh man the other twenty five that that one they see last year Trombley Jared Trombley is that his name Trombley I think it's Trombley yeah Trombley's not or or and then uh what's his name yeah Trombley and then what about uh Trumbull did he graduate. Uh, remember, they're using his medical red shirt. See that? That's, oh, that's right. That's what it was. That's what it was. Or, no, not not medical. They're using his Olympic red shirt because he's he's competing for Team USA this year. That's right. That's um, right. So so they're going to use him. Dylan Fishback. Dylan Fishback. That's the guy who's taking over for uh, 
um, for Trumbull uh, yeah. this year. So he's the guy that's not ranked in the top 25 right now, which he will be by the end of the season. They are excited about Dylan Fishback, and he has been impressive for sure. Yeah. So um, we'll get it. So, yeah, but I mean, I mean, again, seeing six wrestlers in the top 10, uh, you know, all of them in, in you know, American preseason, all American uh, is awesome. And I mean, again, the fact that Trent Highlight at number five, like, I don't think he's been that low. And again, I'm saying yeah. that low, number five since his freshman year. Um, you what, know, he's what, always is this been the same weight class as he was last year. Was he 197 last year? He, or I thought he was 184. He moved that's what I thought. 97. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's probably yeah. why. That's probably he yeah. moved. He moved up. Uh, a lot of people say to uh, because the guy who he, he's lost to the last two years at nationals uh, from the guy from Penn State. He also moved up to 197. So a lot of people say he moved up because of him, but um, I've talked to Coach uh, Pop enough to, you know, I mean, to go for certain that it was mostly because just like with Hydley, how Hydley moved up, he, it's more of his natural weight. So you know, just just trying to stay below a certain weight for so long can really do a number, and I, you know, he's yeah. just tired of it. You know, it's tough, so. it's tough to make make that weight every week. Exactly. I mean, you know, I I can't even imagine losing losing a couple pounds, much less trying to keep pounds off. You know what I mean? So uh, I embrace yeah. all of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. This is what you get, right? <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, very very excited about wrestling this year, folks. I mean, it's day once again. We'll be a preseason top five team in the country, probably. I was gonna um, say, so. have they done the team rankings yet, or no, not yet. It's probably it's next week or two. Yeah, you have six wrestlers in the top eight. You gotta be top five preseason for sure. Yeah, I would so, so you would assume. But I mean, anyway. So yeah, the I, other the other wrestling uh thing they dropped their their rankings too, and it was pretty much spot on. They Intermat, were pretty much Intermat, wrestling. Yeah, Intermat Thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they were pretty much one for one. Yeah. Um. Doc's saying here to say has a great fan base, second to none of our football culture as a brand is not marketed because a lot of football talking heads think UNC is a college football blue blood. It's true. True. Thank you. Good job, Doc. <laughs> Can't say much more than that. True. Thank you. Mic drop. Um, Walk on out. Yeah, mic drop. All right. And then last one here, last week of the week here before we wrap this thing up, uh, longtime editor for the Wolfpacker, Matt Carter, uh, is moving on from the Wolfpacker. And he says, and I quote, not goodbye, but see you around. So, Huge shout out to Matt Carter. Thank you so much, Matt, for all you did for in state, man. You've been uh, following in state for quite some time and uh gotta give you your due props, man, for sure. So yeah, those uh, are stuff. A big fan of yours. Yeah, yeah one amen. of the one of the OGs of modern OGs. day of modern day uh NC State coverage. He's been around since the early two thousands, I think two thousand three, two thousand four. So a yeah. guy that's been around for almost twenty years. So he, he's seen yeah. a thing and done a thing. They couldn't have used a better picture for him on his farewell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not the best picture. Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah. agree. But you know, it's it maybe there. Like, maybe there's an inside story to that picture. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. But it looks like they took a t- a picture of the basketball team and just like cropped it. The photoshopped him in there. Yeah. yeah, he really wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, how many? How many? photographers are really taking pictures of media members during games right so yeah. that's our thing there, Matt, but... we're going to just green screen you here so just grab a camera and just look like you're yeah. doing something <laughs> exactly uh but anyway y'all well so once again so two two things once again if you haven't already again hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we release any new and stay content and that way you're one step closer to entering for the two free tickets for vmi and the free parking pass y'all free of charge and you can get it all you have to do enter is again uh, make sure we hit that 50 light goal for the instant ice pack season preview part one, and then make sure you're a subscriber and then comment down in that video. And we will pick a winner Thursday night to win that amazing prize. Um, and then for us, uh, make sure you follow us on Tuffy talk now on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, as we have an exciting announcement. We have a huge, huge event coming up here on Saturday, which you will not want to miss out on. We will have some, current NC State players at this event. We may have some free food and we may have some opportunities for you to get some more free food after the game as well. So again, a lot of line. I mean, I, I don't know any state fan who's going to say no to free food or meeting current NC State players, right? I mean, I, I couldn't, I, I can't think of one. So make sure to stay tuned for that, y'all, as that is going to be a, a, a huge thing for sure. Um, and yeah, D-Roop uh, saying, throw a like in. Even, even if you already have tickets, you say, nah, I don't need them. Hit, a, hit the like button anyway and help it out. Again, it, it goes a long way. We'd appreciate it for sure. It really helps support us as well. But thank you all so much for tuning in. This was a good time. And hopefully, once again, Wolfpack Nation, breathe in. 
Breathe out. It's going to be okay. Two games in. We have 10 guaranteed games left. We have a lot of football left. Ladies we and get gentlemen. right this Saturday. We get right this Saturday. We blow out VMI. We get ready for Virginia, baby. All right? Want to know on the week? It starts right now. Let's get it done. We'll see y'all soon. Go check out Ice Pack Preview and go pack y'all, baby. Let's go on to VMI.